Cater and Trey seem to generally be considered a set within the school, with Lilia referring to Trey as Cater's partner in Book 5. Rook refers to Cater as Trey's boon companion, which is the same way he refers to Vil, and Trey doesn't deny it or become awkward. Malleus also seems to consider Trey and Cater a set pair. When Trey is considering buying cooking spices as a souvenir for Lilia during Firelit Sky, Malleus threatens consequences for both Trey and Cater, even though Cater had already purchased something entirely different for Lilia. During the Wish Upon a Star event we learn that Trey and Cater roomed together for their first two years in school. We see Cater acting as Trey's right-hand man during Book 1 as they both clean up after Riddle's rampages, and Cater even drops the honorific from Trey's name, which is a big deal for Cater. While the two are close, Trey does not make exceptions for Cater when it comes to Riddle. When Riddle makes a 300-page study guide for Cater that Cater fails to memorize within two days, Trey tells him that he needs to put some effort into his memorization, because Riddle took a lot of time out of his busy schedule to help. When Riddle catches Cater cheating during PE and Cater tries to talk himself out of it, Trey intervenes and tells him to give up. Cater calls him out for this, but Trey insists that he stepped in because Riddle would have given him a worse punishment if Cater had continued to try and lie his way out of the situation, so he was actually helping. In one of their earliest interactions with Deuce, Ace, Grimm and the Prefect, Trey explains Cater's use of nicknames for others on his behalf, and asks him to take it down a notch when Cater asks for the Prefect's contact information, inviting them out to go and purchase a smartphone together. When Cater asks to spend the night at Ramshackle with Ace and Deuce, Trey turns him down. <laughs> Cater reveals Trey as his chosen travel partner in the Firelit Sky event, to which Grimm responds, no surprises there, on Ian, but his line in the original game, is closer to, the pair that never changes. During the same event Jamil thanks Cater, saying, I've been grateful for your and Trey's steadying presence today. There is a cute interaction where Malleus compliments Cater, saying he looks colorful and eye-catching, much like fireworks. Trey is revealed to have been standing awkwardly nearby, watching. Cater assures him that he looks great, too. Trey also says that Cater is big on astrology, is right a lot of the time and has told his fortune before, and is usually the one who smooths things over at Hart's Labule when there's an issue or when students are in trouble. Trey recommends that the prefect go to Cater if they want to know how to get along with their classmates, as he has a ton of friends, and says that Cater won't stop asking him if there's a trick to growing taller. He also says that he is always surprised by Cater's ability to sweet talk his way out of things, and seems familiar with Cater's issues at home, when Cater comments on Jamil being driven half neurotic by Colin Trey responds, that's funny coming from you. Cater says that going home for winter break is kind of a drag because of his older sisters and says he wishes he could stay over at Trey's house instead. Trey says he'd be welcome, but when he reminds Cater how winter is the Padisri's busiest time of the year, Cater relents. Cater is very supportive of Trey during Vargas Camp too. Cater tells Trey he will be sure to post some nice pics of him during Firelit Sky, to which Trey responds, I don't need the other guys in the dorm teasing me again. We see in a vignette that Trey follows Cater on Magicam. Trey is often concerned about being embarrassed, which is an interesting balance to Cater's love of attention. While Trey spends part of the Wish Upon a Star event actively hiding from people out of embarrassment, Cater says, what could be better than getting fawned over everywhere you go? Trey has a voice line of, somewhere along the way I started hanging out with Cater more often. It's nice, because I can be myself around him, insinuating that the embarrassment he feels around others he might not feel around Cater. This may tie into how Trey will actually push back against Cater's teasing instead of playing along like he does with other characters. He asks Cater to not procure pictures from their first day of school, pushes back against Cater's request to take a picture with him during the Wish Upon a Star event, is reluctant to go along when Cater proposes a bet and admonishes him for treating Malleus's participation in Firelit Sky too lightly. When Cater teases Trey about Rook's nickname for him of Chevalier de Roses, Trey says, Cater, I'm going to get cross with you, which is also very rare for the famously mild-mannered Trey. 
Despite Trey's dislike of the fairy tale dance in Wish Upon a Star, it seems Cater attempts to dance with him in the ballroom at Colum's house during Firelit Sky. Trey insists he was merely being dragged around. Cater name drops Trey fairly often, sharing his homemade sweets with Ace, Lilia and Colum throughout different vignettes. Cater insists on escorting Trey to the dorm after Trey catches a cold after going on an errand for Riddle, and the two collaborate to hide unpainted roses from Riddle, working behind his back to keep peace in the dorm. During the opening ceremonies they bet to see who can guess what new students will be sorted into Hart's lobule. Cater loses and is assigned the task of looking after the new students during the welcoming party. After some ups and downs with Cater, the vignette ends with him observing that Trey went to the showers without waiting for him. They buy a teacup and saucer set for Riddle together during Firelit Sky. Riddle coerces Cater into baking a cake during Wish Upon a Star to ease Trey of some of his responsibilities, but it does not go well. Trey goes to Cater's rescue despite Riddle's protests, ultimately turning the situation into an opportunity to grant his own star-sending wish. Cater calls him, one slick customer. Halloween is a stressful time for Trey, when it is revealed that the majority of Hart's lobule has disappeared, Ace asks where Cater has gone. Trey does not respond. Riddle explains that Cater cannot be found and Ace reacts with, oh geez. Vargas Camp 2 is similarly very stressful for Trey. He is repeatedly expressing concern for Cater, specifically, in the original game. When Cater is found during Spectral Soiree it is Trey who identifies him, saying, on the outside, at least, Cater can come off as flippant and fickle, but he would never take out his anger on someone else. Cater apologizes profusely afterwards, with Trey assuring him, don't worry about it. No one blames you. It is thanks to Cater that Trey puts his unique magic on display during book one of the main story, but during Riddle's Overblot it is revealed that Cater had had no idea of the true extent of Trey's abilities. Trey is not the only one keeping secrets between them, however. Cater had been hiding his dislike of sweet foods from Trey, but Trey was able to figure out the truth on his own. In the EN adaptation, this interaction was rewritten to Cater admonishing himself for trying to hide his feelings, but in his actual dialogue he admonishes Trey, saying something closer to, your whole, not saying what you think, thing is really not good, which ties back into the issues of book one itself and Trey's enabling of Riddle rather than blaming himself. Trey promises to make a quiche for the next unbirthday party in order to make up for it, and Cater has a line about a student at the dorm baking him a diamond-shaped quiche that was tailored to his tastes, but does not specify who made it. Cater seems to be a fan of Trey's cooking, Trey says that during the Firelit Sky event Cater would keep suggesting spices for him to buy, and I assume he wants me to make some of his favorite spicy foods when we get back. During Wish Upon a Star we see that it seems Trey cannot deduce what it is Cater's true wishes really are, or why he refuses to confide them. On the subject of Trey Cater reveals that he is slow to anger, but when he does get bent out of shape, he can stay that way for a while. Cater is the only one with any awareness throughout all of Trey's dorm vignette that Trey is displeased with comments about his baking, revealing at the end that he'd known all along. Cater also tells us that, it's the guys who act all harmless that you really gotta watch out for, about Trey, and by the end of Bean Fest, Riddle has agreed with him. Cater and Trey are equally responsible for Riddle's explosion at Ace for bringing a chestnut tart to the unbirthday party in book one, but despite Cater asking, are you really okay with this, in response to Riddle's rages, Trey responds, what do you expect me to do about it, and ultimately neither of them take action until Riddle overblots. Cater does go after Trey again for giving Riddle's foul mood a pass, asking if Trey has pampered Riddle like that since they were kids. Cater says, I haven't been around you guys that long, but doesn't it ever get, exhausting, but Trey insists that Cater would be the same if Cater had ever met Riddle's mother. In book 2 Riddle gives Cater permission to leave rather than stand and face an overblotting Leona. Cater responds with, we do this together, house warden, with the reasoning of, Trey wouldn't let me hear the end of it. Cater is very much aware of the bond between Trey and Riddle, saying in a chat that they are, as far as Heartslobule's concerned, like the Queen and King of Hearts. <laughs>